So what we're really focusing on in this video is the market revolution. And if we're really going to understand the impact of the market revolution, we've got to understand what an economist means by a market because it's not the usual use of the term market or the usual image people get of a market. So a lady by the name of Winifred Rothenberg has written one of the best books on this whole topic. And the title of that book is Market Places to Market Economy. I think that's a really helpful way to think about this because the way a lot of people use the word market is what an economist would call a marketplace, like an actual physical place, maybe like a farmer's market, maybe like a flea market, like Wolf's over in the Allstate Arena. Um, you, you've actually got a physical place that people come to and some people come to sell their things and other people come to buy their things and they come to this place to meet up. Now, back during this whole period, before the market revolution, there were actually times where that literal thing would happen. But a little bit more figuratively, basically what this meant was people who lived nearby each other making some things to sell to other people or to trade. We would call that barter to other people. And so that idea of a marketplace is really kind of based on the idea that the buyer is buying right from the seller. Like as in there's no middleman of any kind. It's just, oh, hey, you got that? I'll take it. What an economist means by a market is much bigger. It's an entire network where people who are making things are getting those things in the hands of other people who will put them in places where they can be sold. And the people will come to those other places that are collections of goods that come from all around the network. And the forces of supply and demand will set prices as opposed to people just arbitrarily saying, yeah, we've charged this for that for that many years and so we're going to keep charging that all those things with supply demand and prices through a whole network where if you're the buyer you're never meeting the seller and vice versa that's really what an economist means by a market and so the market economy is going to have two really big effects and the first one is the change from marketplaces to a market economy. Like before the market revolution, if you take a look at the daily economic lives of people who lived in the United States, you had basically a diameter of about 40 to 50 miles where everything they were buying and everything they were selling was contained in that tight little 40 to 50 mile circle. Now on a human scale, 40, 50 miles, that's a long way. But on a nationwide scale, when you've got big markets that are really acting like markets in cities like New York City and Philadelphia and Baltimore and Charleston, most people live way too far away from those to get any benefit at all. They're stuck in their tight little circle of say 40 to 50 miles. Well, the biggest reason why that was the case was because transporting goods was so difficult back then that it was so expensive that it just kept people from doing it. A historian by the name of Heather Cox Richardson has a great way to put this idea of the difficulty of transporting things. She says she wishes that one of the things she wishes people understood better about early American history is that water was a highway and land was the obstacle. That's a pretty cool way to think about that because if you didn't live right near a great waterway that would work as a highway, land was an obstacle toward getting the stuff that you wanted to sell to the people who wanted to buy it. So that's what kept your diameter of your circle only about 40 to 50 miles. By the end of this market revolution, we're really going to have that network that economists talk about when they mean a market. And that network is going to connect all the different places in the United States. 
people are now going to be able to get stuff from New York and Philadelphia and Baltimore and Charleston and lots of places in between. And once they're able to count on this national market, once they're able to count on stuff that they make getting sold in places that they won't even know about except for the money that they'll get paid, that's going to change the way we produce things in America and it's going to change the way people live. Because the way people lived before the market revolution kind of comes from this idea you might remember from the colonial videos where we talked about subsistence farming. Well, as America developed a little bit more out of the colonial period, people developed kind of fancier sounding terms for the way they were transitioning to the idea of a market. They'll call it subsistence plus living or semi-subsistence living. And basically what they mean by that is most people were still providing for themselves. Most people were still making most of their own stuff. They were growing their own food, they were making their own clothes, they were building their own houses. And the stuff that they were buying was really maybe some finished goods or a few other things that they couldn't make for themselves. Think about the way we live today. It's not like that at all. Hardly any of us make our own stuff anymore. What we do is we find something we're good at and we train to get a job in it. And we call that making a living by having a job that gets you paid. And then you take that money from your job and that's how you get most of your stuff. We buy most things instead of just the few odds and ends that we weren't making for ourselves. Think about what a change that is in the lives of Americans to go from the one, the marketplace-based way of living, to the other, the market way of living. So if you're wondering, well, how did these two processes happen? That's the subject of the next lecture on the market revolution.